Good morning and a very happy Easter to you. It's a wonderful privilege to share faith with you um, on this Easter day. Um, we are part of the, uh, we are in the Easter octave and every day is considered to be Easter day. I wish you and your loved ones uh, the joy of the resurrection. I want to reflect on the gospel passage for today's Mass um, coming from the 21st chapter of John verses 1 to 14. This text opens up an opportunity for us to look at the mystery of the church. What is the church? From the New Testament, we know that the church is the bride of Christ and also the body of Christ. The church is not so much an ornament as it is a temple made up of living stones, that is, you and me and a host of others of all shapes, sizes, backgrounds, cultures, and with varying degrees of holiness, commitment, and even brokenness. Whenever we examine a mystery that is deep and complex as the church is, it becomes helpful to use imagery. And that is exactly what the Apostolic Fathers did when they sought to understand the mystery of the church. I want to mention three images and amplify one of these three. The Fathers presented the church using the image of sun and moon, saying that just as the moon reflects no light of her own, but only the light of the sun, so too the church reflects no light of her own, but only the light of Christ. The second image used by the fathers is that of mother. Using maternal categories, they explained that the church generates new life through the womb of the baptismal font, nourishes this life on the breasts of the Old Testament and the New Testament, feeds us with the finest wheat, pours oil on our wounds when we are ill, forgives us with tenderness and in general, takes care of us from the womb to the tomb. The third image which I want to use and to amplify is that of boat. It is hardly an accident that the main gathering space in the church building is called the nave, from the Latin navis meaning ship. In earlier times, boats were made of wood and the apostolic fathers felt that just as we are saved from sin by the wood of the cross, so too we are saved from the storms of this world by the wood of the boat. This image of boat for the church was no apostolic thumbsuck. They had a love for scriptures and would have known that the word for the ark by which Noah was saved is the same word that scripture uses for the basket by which Moses was saved. This word became a symbol by which God saves through water. Notice in the New Testament how Jesus would urge his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. Notice that Jesus got into the boat, sat down, and whenever a Jewish rabbi sat down, it meant that what he was to say was important. And he taught the crowds from there. Notice also that it was Peter's boat. In today's passage, Peter wants to go fishing. The verb indicates that it was not merely a Sunday afternoon fishing trip. He wanted to go fishing on an ongoing basis. He was a fisherman before Jesus got hold of him. And after the crucifixion, he wanted to go back to his old way of life. There were seven apostles in Peter's boat that day. Seven is the number of perfection for the Jews. They caught nothing, and Jesus appears. He is never far from his church when it is in need. He asked a question which the English translator has, caught anything, friends? In the original, he asks, anything to eat? And from the form of the verb, to eat, it is clear that he wants to know, how will you sustain yourselves on an ongoing basis? Or... How will you be nourished each day? And then he took them back to how he touched them the first time. Drop your net on the other side. And the results were astounding. 
Whereas Peter starts off by wanting to go back to business as usual, he jumps into the water. It is now business unusual. This was risky as the last time he did this, he nearly drowned. They caught a number of big fish. This text must be read alongside Luke 5, 1 to 11. And the similarities and differences must be noted. In the text prior to the resurrection, that is the Lucan text, there are two boats and two nets. In today's passage, after the resurrection, there is one boat and one net. In the Lucan text, they netted many of the same kind of fish. But in today's passage, there are many of several kinds of fish. Remember, every tribe and tongue and people and nation. That's in Revelation 7. Whereas in the Lucan text, the nets began to tear. In today's passage, describing as it does what happens after the resurrection, the net did not tear. This is simply an indication that in spite of numerous weaknesses, the church will not fail. Just as his physical body was torn and bleeding on the cross and not one of his bones was broken, so too with his mystical body, the church, torn apart at times through defections and scandals, not one of her bones will be broken. The church will not fail simply because it is the church of Christ. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the gift of the new life of the risen Christ, which he makes available to us. Thank you for Easter joy. Thank you, Father, for nourishing us through your church and help us to be worthy members of so great a mystery. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, your homes and your families, and remain with you forever. And so I thank you for joining me for this faith reflection, and I urge you to continue to bask in the light of the Easter candle. God bless you.